Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Patrick Lovell, Truth Bomb riffing the con on, go figure, St. Patrick's Day. And uh, March 17th, 2024. And um, it is definitely March madness, I'd have to say. A lot of things cooking in my brain right now that I'll try to deliver in this 485th Truth Bomb that's part sermon, part lecture, part... Um, therapy for me but at the same time i might call it the declaration considering everything that i have and uh you know there's been some good movement i'm pretty happy about kind of the the tiny steps that i'm taking to get this information to the people that need to hear it um this is the 485th truth bomb on patrick global truth bombs the con i think i've just surpassed two years attempting to get your attention with this information and um it's led to 910 subscribers. I deeply appreciate you all. I would love to have you all on board sharing this, uh, spreading this message if you can, if you're compelled, if you're new to this information, I would highly encourage you to do the same. I also have the door open um, all the time that if anybody wants to reach out to me and ask me questions uh, or find out how you can get involved to help us get this message out there, I would deeply, deeply appreciate it. Um, but yeah, we're, we're in a squeeze, man. And the whole country is insane. I mean, I'm going to say the whole world is insane, but I was really, oh man, I was triggered my friends on Friday. I was triggered on Friday because none other than former attorney general of the United States under the Barack Obama administration, the first African-American attorney general in American history, a gentleman by the name of Eric Holder tweeted this and it basically summarized everything that I'm banging my head against this wall of dystopia to try to get to your heart and to your head and to make you understand how pretty much everything that we are surrounded by in this never ending echo chamber or water cannon of disinformation of misinformation has got millions of people completely bamboozled. And I'll never forget, my father used to have this statue um, that kind of radiated what it means to be an attorney uh, in court on the fly. When you can't dazzle them with brilliance, you baffle them with bullshit. And then I think that is the sum total of media and our political situation. And ultimately, all of the powers that be that have strangled the truth. And this is what really... I can't even begin to tell you how this ricocheted in my brain when I read it. But Eric Holder said, <clears throat> there is no cavalry coming. There are no miracle solutions. There are no saviors. In the end, we, the American people, not our institutions, have to save our democracy by voting in defense of democracy this fall. We are the cavalry. The responsibility is ours. I repeat, Eric Holder was the Attorney General of the United States, the first African American Attorney General of the United States, at the head of one of the most powerful institutions in the world, in the United States, but in the world, really, because he is the Chief Law Enforcement Officer of the United States, and the, and the resources at the Department of Justice are absolutely extraordinary. And Eric Holder betrayed the United States, as did his boss, Barack Obama. And I am a Democrat or was, I'm more of an independent leaning um, progressive, um, but I have always been on the Democratic side, but I think I'll try to imbue some of my experience and what I've learned throughout my lifetime uh, as I channel you through what is ultimately the information that is some sort of configuration of the Rosetta Stone, of the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Grail. And that's what I'm offering you, which is our savior. It is the truth. Not me, the messenger, which incidentally, the irony is it is St. Patrick's Day. And yeah, my name is Patrick. And what is the allegory of St. Patrick's? I believe the historical story was that St. Patrick was the patron saint 
of Ireland. And um, the allegory was that he drove the snakes out of Ireland, which were, I believe, the heathens. And um, he converted pagans to Christianity. And that's why St. Patrick's Day is the celebration, I think, on the day that he died. Uh, a day of somewhat reverie, because I think in Ireland, it was a day that they allowed, you know, cons consumption of alcohol and feasting and all of those things and, and sort of think, being thankful to uh, the efforts of St. Patrick. And uh, I find that useful because that's what I'm doing in this attempt to garner the attention of tens of millions of people to drive the snakes out of the United States in a populist crusade that I've deemed the Clean New Deal. And it's a populist crusade to purge corruption and drown the fascism it fuels. And that is the Clean New Deal. So I want you to consider for a second what I just laid on you from former Attorney General Eric Holder and his proclamation. And we're seeing this if you happen to watch MSNBC on what I guess many in MAGA might frame as the left, but it's really not the left. It's the revolving door of the Wall Street meritocracy that are the professionals, that are the smart people, the successful people, the people that we might call the adults in the room that have also betrayed us. Because here they are telling us, the American people, that it's up to us to save democracy because the institutions of the United States have failed. And what institutions are they talking about specifically? Well, as you might recall, I mentioned that, oh, yeah, we're at the dawn of March Madness. For those of you that are Hoops fans and the upcoming tournament, yeah, it's always an incredible uh, time of year where we're all betting on our, uh, you know, our brackets and, you know, just the, the buzzer beaters and then always the upsets and everything that, you know, keeps us on the edge of our seats was happening that we construe as March Madness. And then that's in the midst of the March Madness that has engulfed really the credibility of the institutions of the United States. And it's been all over this week, particularly trending on X, which is pretty incredible. I guess the first person that I'll just mention, just because it's such a ridiculous story, is Don Lemon. Um, I, I've seen Don Lemon trending on X for the past few days because he is such a moron. It, I mean, he's a, a befuddled peacock who doesn't know who he is, but had an opportunity to take his garbage, salacious media perspective to X because he was invited by Elon Musk to kind of be the counterweight narrative and trying to you know, bring heavyweights to X to kind of make X the go-to in terms of, I guess, content and the kind of crap that this modern media garbage machine has created and to provide an alternative to Tucker Carlson. So apparently Elon Musk had offered Don Lemon something along the lines of $10 million to bring this stupid shtick to X. And Elon, or sorry, Don Lemon apparently asked Elon a bunch of personal questions that thin-skinned Elon Musk, the champion of free speech, didn't take kindly to, and apparently decided to, you know, uh, withdraw his offer and the contracts and tear them up on Don Lemon, which is hilarious to me because all Don Lemon had to do was just his stupid stuff and he'd be safe with a $10 million contract. Instead, I guess he tried to push the envelope a little bit and I doubt it was pushing it at all. To be honest with you, if you put me in front of Elon Musk, I can promise you there'd be some fireworks. But Don Lemon, <laughs> I think I, I saw a trending right before I pressed play, something along the lines of uh, Elon Musk making a statement that said, yeah, I, I don't particularly have any respect for Don Lemon, and nor do I think he's anything worthwhile. However, I will, in the light of me, you know, I guess, walking away from our contract, I welcome... Don, Don Lemon to put his information and broadcast it for free on X. <laughs> that, that, that to me is so hilarious because Don Lemon, of course, was a mainstay of CNN for I don't know how long. And I used to always like every once in a while kind of tap into his show. And, you know, I, I just scoff because it just brought nothing to the table 
And I always laughed at CNN because I knew CNN, for example, through its president, Jeff Zucker, was partially and maybe monumentally responsible for Donald Trump to begin with because he and former CEO of Paramount or Viacom, Les Moonves, who used to, for my generation, um, you know, make himself available to David Letterman quite frequently. And both of them had been um, on the record for saying, yeah, Trump was great for ratings. And so those maggots in mainstream media gave us this guy that now mainstream media along the institutions. And I mean, I swear to God, I've seen all of these people from Rachel Maddow to Lawrence O'Donnell to the entirety of MSNBC, like basically panicking and saying, my God, the Supreme Court isn't going to do its job. The judiciary isn't going to do its job. Oh, my God. Somebody is above the law in the United States, because, of course, they've been saying the last I don't know how many years that nobody's above the law. Well, yeah, there are uh, institutions and people, particularly those of incredible means or backing of those who have incredible means that are above the law. Surprise. You're not the United States, because if we don't have the integrity of law, what else might we not actually have? Well, therein lies kind of the subject matter of this truth bomb as I roll through this, because the next phase of what we were seeing this week really <clears throat> starts with Fonnie Willis. And Fonnie Willis, of course, is spearheading as the DA in Fulton County, Georgia, Georgia one of the more important cases, criminal cases, uh, regarding Donald Trump and his scheming through racketeering, because this is a racketeering indictment, to steal votes and the presidential election, which of course is what everybody in mainstream media that's not on the MAGA side is losing their minds about, because you know, Fonnie Willis made a really critical error. And it was amazing how this popped up in social media. It was like high school on Friday. And I saw this, you know, throughout mainstream media on MSNBC. And I tuned into some of CNN and some of Fox to watch their reactions to this whole thing. But really, the information that was, you know, exploding all over X as it was trending was this comparison that Fonnie Willis's lack of judgment in ethics in the case of having a sexual relationship with um, her colleague that she had hired, a gentleman by the, name, by the name of Nathan Wade, who I guess was her lead investigator on this RICO case. And he'd worked for over two years on this. And yes, he was paid by the DA's office and they had a romantic relationship. And what it came down to was the Trump's defense attorneys had called out that, hey, wait a second, I, they, they made the accusation that uh, Fonnie Willis was basically um, skimming money from the budget, I guess, of the DA's office to hire someone that then was coming back to her in the form of trips to hotels and uh, in restaurants. Um, and she couldn't account for it because, of course, this incredible testimony that took place about two weeks ago where she was like, yeah, my daddy raised me not to ever be on the hook for a man that would walk away from the bill. So I always carry cash. So I carry cash and I don't have the receipts for what was going on, which led this whole thing, uh, the judge to decide on Friday, which created outrage by many people on both sides of the equation, where he said that it had the air of mendacity, the odor, sorry, the odor of mendacity which means it stinks to high heaven. And it is stupid. It's ridiculous that a DA in, in, in a career changing uh, you know, opportunity to bring this monumental case of racketeering to the former president that's still you know, at the heart of this whole thing, stealing the election through this election, electioneering scheme, that she would actually have the you know, if you were a man, people would be all over this and it would be like you don't dip, you know, the pen in the company ink. And that's been known since what, the 80s, maybe forever, but particularly the 80s. And it's not like Fonnie Willis doesn't know this. So, yeah, it was a massive error in judgment. And she should recuse herself because Fonnie Willis actually is on the record having run for the DAA 
prior to all of the stuff taking place because the the previous DA in Fulton County had a similar sexual encounter <laughs> where uh, Fonnie Willis used it as a sort of a political issue where she said, you know, if the same thing happened to me in my office, I would recuse myself. The exact same thing happened, so she should recuse herself, but it's not comparing apples to apples to what everybody was reacting to, which is really correct in terms of the trajectory because many people that were trying to basically guffaw the uh you know the 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 sort of odor of a mendacity sort of uh situation is like oh my god she's a woman and she's a black woman at that and oh my god can you can you believe the uh hypocrisy considering oh my god supreme court justice clarence thomas and his wife jimmy tonic jenny thomas do you, do you know why that's important because jenny thomas was literally in the midst of the insurrection. And of course, Clarence Thomas is a Supreme Court justice. And if you're not aware of it, Clarence Thomas has gotten uh, the heat of the spotlight because of absolute insane corruption, not eth ethical mal malfeasance, corruption. It's known that Clarence Thomas has been on the take of white right-wing billionaire who has some sort of fascination with Nazi uh, paraphernalia, you can't make this stuff up, was paying millions of dollars directly to Clarence Thomas through a variety of ways. The first of which 60 Minutes profiled, I think, last summer, where Clarence Thomas had gotten this unbelievably five-star RV because apparently he likes to take trips around the country to connect with real Americans. Yeah, I'm sure he's connecting with real Americans in this like Rolls Royce of RVs. And also he's traveled first class on, you know, private jets to five-star resorts around the world, which I believe include hunting lodges. And uh, Clarence Thomas is, country, is his country club as it gets. And this whole thing goes back to, I think it was the late 80s. It wasn't really that long after uh, he was appointed to the Supreme Court. And let's not forget, uh, at that time, Congressman Joe Biden's role in um, the entirety of what was then the Anita Hill, uh, Clarence Thomas situation, which is a shit show in its own right. And of course, you know, if you re might recall, I think it was, he thought it was a pickup line to say, you've got pubic hair on your Coke can to Anita Hill or something like that. Something ridiculous. The guy's a freak. But the long and the short of it is not too long after he had um, been appointed to the Supreme Court, he had made it known that he wasn't getting paid enough. And he was thinking about going to the open market and leaving the Supreme Court. And the, the bells went off and all the right wing sort of structures that have existed since the John Birch Society. And lo and behold, this guy who is a right white wing billionaire who has a penchant for Nazi paraphernalia is paying this black judge all of this sort of under the table stuff for this lifestyle, including paying for Clarence Thomas's mother's home. The impropriety of this is just unbelievable, and there's only ethical violations that supposedly can hold the Supreme Court justices accountable, so they themselves are above the law, and what would we get? I mean, talking about a stain on the, uh, the, the, the most inspiring speech in the history of my lifetime, the Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, to fast forward to this would be, you know, a potential sort of consequence of having black men ascend to the highest offices of the land, only to become corrupt for the man. And that should really tell you everything you should need to know. But that's only one part of the equation with Clarence Thomas. His wife, Jenny Thomas, had been working and getting paid directly by the Koch Enterprise Foundation or whatever their LLC was that she was in the mix probably consulting. But of course, it's because she's married to Clarence Thomas. And of course, the Supreme Court is hearing all sorts of cases including, of course, the ridiculousness of the self-executing, you know, uh, 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 14th Amendment, Section 3, in the case of the Colorado uh, decision to not have uh, Donald Trump on the ballot that they overran because they're like a corrupt su Supreme Court. And, and it's not just Clarence Thomas and, and, uh, and uh, Jenny Thomas. Justice Alito is the same. And I can only imagine... What would happen if we went into keg refrigerator or what about a kegerator, you know, Kavanaugh and uh, all of the other goons on the Supreme Court? And it's just so unbelievably clear 
what has happened over the course of the last several decades, particularly after Citizens United in this revolving door. So that's just, that would be enough for this truth bomb ref to there. But there's more. Because the other thing that was trending throughout, uh, uh, well, and I want to kind of finish up that thought. So is Fonnie Willis, you know, at the level of Clarence Thomas? No. Should she recuse herself? Yeah. But I doubt she will because she's running for uh, office again. And she wants to rely on the free press of those that are going to support her, particularly from MSNBC, because that's what she wants is to win her election. For me, this case is so monumentally bigger than Fonnie Willis, but I have to give her credit that she brought it as a RICO um, indictment and everything that goes with it, which I'll cover shortly. But should she recuse herself? Yes. At the level of um, Clarence Thomas? No. So what should happen to Clarence Thomas? There should be a self-ejecting. We, we should have an ejection button that sends this guy over the freaking mode of the Supreme Court and into the wall of the Department of Justice and through it like a cartoon or something. I would love to see him just face first into a brick wall, honestly. I can't stand corruption of any sort. But at the Supreme Court, you've got to be kidding me. But again, staying within the theme of the failing legal system, the other name that was trending all week was, of course, Merrick Garland. Who is Merrick Garland? Merrick Garland is our attorney general now, and he was, of course, appointed by President Biden, and he is so concerned with the sort of imprimatur of um, being polarized uh, and, and not letting the law do exactly uh, what it should do that he has gone the other way and actually made it difficult for the Department of Justice special uh, you know, counsel uh, and also Alvin Bragg to get information in cases that suddenly the Trump defense team had requested some more information from the Justice Department. And it turns out that Alvin Bragg, the DA of the Southern District of Manhattan, had been requesting this information for seven month, months. And then suddenly the DOJ vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Merrick Garland uh, had dumped 71,000 documents on him which led uh, Alvin Bragg to delaying the trial for a month. And this was in the case of Stormy Daniels and the hush money payments. And if you've listened to some of my truth bombs before, I've said to you, because of Citizens United, this is just yet another example of how monumentally stupid Donald Trump is, because all Donald Trump had to do was hide behind the uh, nonprofit organizations to make payments behind the scenes and nobody but would have been the wiser to Stormy Daniels for hush money, but instead he did it directly, which is against campaign violation laws and all the stuff that involves uh, Michael Cohen. So there's more as it relates to Merrick Garland, but particularly as it relates to the other gentleman's name, who I can't remember, who uh, did the special counsel against uh, against Joe Biden, which turned out to be Butkus. But of course, the heavy blow was that you know Joe Biden is old which has nothing to do with a criminal investigation uh, or even a civil investigation for that matter, but it was a PR situation. And so a lot of people are like, hey, eject Merrick Garland. So let's add him to the list of Clarence Thomas. Let's have him sent over the moat into a brick wall, you know, and say adios to that guy. But the failure of the Department of Justice to uh, rein in somebody is absolutely transparently corrupt and guilty of so much of what we've seen. And the fact that it's not happening is absolutely insane. And I'll circle back to what that means vis-a-vis -vis Eric Holder, which is ultimately why I am holding the equivalent of the Rosetta Stone and the uh, Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Grail all in one, which is the truth. And I'm getting there. But as it would, relates to failures in the uh, judiciary this week alone, another name that was trending, of course, is Judge Eileen Cannon down in Florida because she's sitting and running out the clock on Jack Smith's investigation, or I should say criminal trial, of Donald Trump taking secret documents to his compound in Mar-a-Lago. And of course, I hope you remember through all of this chaos that the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago. I mean, this has never happened before in American history. This is like so beyond comprehension. And yeah, they got a, a, a lot of, I don't know what they got. They got the banker boxes, but a lot of stuff slipped through. And do you think it's possible that Donald Trump was selling secrets to 
either our enemies or maybe what we might say is his allies. Did you notice that, um, you know, in all of this hoopla around the Republicans trying to take it to Hunter Biden, who is, of course, a moron. And it's uh, it's unfortunate because his brother, Bo Biden, was the real deal. But Hunter Biden and everything that he's involved with from, you know, his, his, his evading taxes and his uh, gun charges and then, I guess, being involved with hookers and drug guys himself. You would think he'd fit right in with Republicans, by the way, all things considered. You'd think that him and, uh, you know, uh, Trump juniors, I should say, would get along swimmingly and go on, you know, trips together. In fact, maybe they did. We don't know it yet. But of course, the Republicans have, you know, been all about that and Burisma and corruption in China and yada, yada, yada. But in comparison to what? Kushner? Donald Trump's son-in-law and, of course, his former Treasury Secretary, Stephen Mnuchin, who have realized, I think, something along the order, the magnitude of $6 billion directly from um, Saudi Arabia. And I just saw trending Jared Kushner was in, I believe, um, some of the former uh, you know, countries, the Eastern Bloc countries that kind of bevy around Russia that uh, he's doing business deals with now, which, of course, again, is... As far as, you know, the law goes, you know, if a president gets busted uh, based on the emoluments clause for taking bribes from foreign countries, then he's, you know, he's ejected. I mean, it's just like I instead of having a former a television show like Trump, Trump saying you're fired. Imagine me on my own television show where I'm like ejection, they <laughs> just fly, <laughs> catapult him over the wall and into uh, over the boat and into a wall. I mean, that's. All of these guys deserve something just so dramatic like that because it's absolutely insane. And of course, it's even more insane considering it's Saudi Arabia. But therein lies the most transparent relationship and everything that undermines everything that we are. And I've been talking about it incessantly in my truth bombs, but that's another truth bomb riff. And, uh, you know, I would encourage you if you're just new to this channel to endeavor all of the information that I've been laying on you. And there's a lot of it on Saudi Arabia, but you know, my God, and I'll save that for another day, but going back to judge Eileen Cannon and the conflicts of interest and in comparing apples to apples as it relates to Fonnie Willis. I mean, as it turns out, judge Cannon's husband has, you know, been a, a supporter of Trump. And I think a pretty significant one. And when I mean supporter, I mean, you know, somebody who provides, financial support. And so, wow, that's a judge in the situation, probably trying to um, maneuver to get on the Supreme Court. And she's banking that, well, okay, let me play roulette with my career here. But if I jam this whole thing up and Trump wins the election, I'm going to the Supreme Court, or at least that's the thought. Wow. <laughs> Talking about conflicts of interest, <laughs> you know, I mean, th this thing doesn't stop. And, um, you know, you just got to kind of just think of, for a second about how this whole thing plays out. Right. So we're supposed to think that judges are above reproach, that we're supposed to think that the, the um, judiciary judges does its job because we put judges in a position where they're umpires. They're just there to call balls and strikes based on their knowledge of the law. And because they have outside of having a run for reelection. They pretty much have a cushy assignment, pretty decent, uh, you know, minus what Clarence Thomas might think, but a decent salary and ability and, you know, all the pension and everything that goes with it and power and prestige. And that used to be good enough to get yourself into, like, I'm reminded of the judge in uh, one of my favorite movies, Caddyshack, <laughs> hit the country club back in the day. Remember Rodney Dangerfield and... Uh, Oh, my God, I can't think of his name at the moment. One of the greatest comedic actors of all time. But, yeah, I mean, a, a, a judgeship is a big, big deal. And then to think of all of the progressive wars that took place in this country to get people that are of African-American descent or a, a woman uh, or even Asian or whatever it is, uh, to, to get to the highest levels of what we depend upon as a, a country of, by, and for the people – have turned out to be what exactly I've been fighting the whole time and which sent me on my journey, which is when I discovered that we're not a democracy, we're not a free market capitalistic economy. We are a not a government of, by, and for the people. We're a government of, by, and for the corruption. Full stop. 
And I believe that everything that we're seeing on display has got millions of people aware of it. But just think about who you're listening to in terms of where you're getting information and how they're providing a lot of this information to you and what it means. And so I'm ultimately the anti-Rachel Maddow and the anti-Tucker Carlson. I'm just the antithesis of both of those guys. Why? Because I'm carrying the Rosetta Stone, Ark of the Covenant, Holy Grail, Savior, that is the truth. Well, all of these entities and these engines that are backed by millions of dollars and many, many people in support, um, you know, are, have been bloviating lies to you for now over a decade, at least. But as it relates to Rachel Maddow, <clears throat> and, you know, all respect to Rachel Maddow in terms of her capacity. She's a very smart woman. She's got great resources. She spends a great yarn on stories that she wants to tell, particularly those that she's paid $44 million a year by the wall, revolving door of Wall Street meritocracy be, to be the communication director of the Democratic Party to basically bring all of her focus and agenda to all of the mistakes of Donald Trump, which is fair. And boy, it does take up all the space that she and the entirety of MSNBC has. But I'll give you one example that is one of the most excruciating examples to me in context to what it is that I'm revealing to you. So, of course, Rachel Maddow, as it turns out, was basically the domino that ultimately provided us this um, revelation that there were complicit actors in an engineering electoral scheme to use documentation fabrication to create fake electors to seal the election. And apparently that turned out to be a criminal referral to the Department of Justice, which came full circle. And as you see, play out in the racketeering indictment of Fonnie Willis uh, in Fulton County, Georgia, because the way that case is played out is that you've got Rudolph Giuliani and complicit actors, including uh, lying attorneys that were involved with uh, forging documents to, again, steal the election. Now, what have I been revealing to you in my truth bombs? I I've got the evidence of literally, I mean, personal evidence of north of 100,000. But I know that based on that sort of sub, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, what do we talk about? That gives you a broader contextualization of the whole. The, uh, the magnitude of documentation fraud and illegal foreclosures around the country using attorneys that lie, that illegally foreclosed on tens of millions of people. That's important, so pack that away because Rachel Maddow can get paid $44 million and reach millions of people to tell you about, I don't know how many electors, uh, fake electors were involved with this, but I think it's like six. I'm revealing to you basically tens of millions of felonies. And there's more. But Tucker Carlson, for example, Tucker Carlson is this, oh my God, I, I don't think I despise anybody more in media than Tucker Carlson, even though Tucker Carlson, of course, is a smart guy. I mean, he's got incredible mastery of language. He's a linguistic um, gymnast that will provide some shred of evidence of truth on some topics and then pervert it and worm his way into an outcome that makes you go from where you should be to someplace all over the stratosphere to where you're just a tool in the full circus. You know, recently it was interesting to me that he did this uh, interview that got a lot of attention because it was on X with, of course, the uh, then and potentially, uh, well, there's an election right now in Russia, but with, of course, Vladimir Putin, which was very telling, and Vladimir Putin schooled him and made fun of him not getting into the CIA. And really, Tucker just revealed that, uh, which was news to me, that he's not necessarily working for uh, Putin. I think Tucker's working for the white, white wing billionaires that probably have Nazi paraphernalia, um, you know, like like Harlan Crow. But, you know, there you might ask yourself, well, wh what is the connection to Russia? For those of you who don't understand geopolitics and everything else. Well, really, what it is, is this sort of solidarity of a global white Christian nationalism that's of course male dominated. Do you think that talks about or that that kind of covers what MAGA might be and what that's all about? Oh yeah. And then why would Russia and Vladimir Putin under those circumstances be all in on our white right wing billionaires uh in, in Tucker Carlson and tr Trump and everything else and of course many on the uh in the media side have, have, have you know warned us not to 
put too much into so-called Russiagate in the relationship between the information that came from the Steele dossier and the P tapes and blah, 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 which was set up by former guys at MI6 on behalf of the Clintons. Meanwhile, they're not talking to you about Deutsche Bank which is a direct connection between uh, Vladimir Putin and, and, and Donald Trump. And by the way, it was Deutsche Bank that provided all the loans that Letitia James, the AG of New York, just got a $450 million settlement that's now $550 million because of the taxes and uh, interest and everything else that Donald Trump's going to have to pony up that for, for fraud. But the only bank that would loan to him is Deutsche Bank, and why might that be? Well, there's a couple of reasons, and most of them are on revealed in my work, which is www.thecon.tv, which is really all of the elements, the blueprint from what it is that I'm revealing to you, which is the Holy Grail, the Rosetta Stone, and the Ark of the Covenant uh, of Truth that is our Savior. That is everything that Tucker Carlson and Rachel Maddow and everybody that stems from their kind of verticals and their echo chambers are not telling you. And so who am I? Well, I'm a muckraking journalist. I've already established that, like St. Patrick's, I'm trying to drive the snakes out of our, you know, uh, it's almost like it's like they're snakes worming their way through the bloated, uh, dead whale of our democracy and our financial system, the carcass of, of America. And I'm trying to get them out. And then I'm trying to resuscitate what we are because I'm trying to lead, you know, through my uh, uh, Clean New Deal, uh, exodus from corruption to create the resurrection of the American dream. And I've done that initially through my work, which is a five-part series, six hours in length, that involves everyone from the FBI, the DOJ, the SEC, AGs around the country, and uh, high-level whistleblowers, which is the exact case that the Department of Justice failed to deliver on behalf of the American people. And this is where we get into, ultimately, how everything is an absolute ocean of madness in March Madness and chaos and lies because the judiciary system has completely collapsed because it's completely corrupt because it's completely tied to this revelation that I'm just about to unload on you. So drum roll, please. And if you listen to you know music like Metallica, turn up the volume as loud as you can and then you know push stop to get all of your emotional juices flowing in the right direction because this is what they're all lying to you about. So what I've learned on my journey was I discovered the largest racketeering uh, enterprise in the history of the world that never ended. It was led by our financial system, the CEOs of Wall Street, that used what's known as control fraud to create this giant racketeering enterprise of lies that, for example, in 2008, started with a four and a half trillion dollar bubble in the housing market that morphed into a 600 to 800 trillion dollar catastrophe through derivatives and it completely blew up the world and it just it brought the entire global machine to a stop so what is capital in the context to economies well it's like blood think about your body uh without blood or it's like oil or gas for your for your, uh, your 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 car, right? Now think about what happens. I mean, that's capital, first of all, and it's the whole reason capitalism can exist. But we don't have capitals because of what it is that I'm going to tell you. Imagine if there is a blood clot in your body and blood can't get to where it needs to go. What happens? You seize up and you die. What happens if you have some sort of leak in your car? The same thing. That's what happened in the United States based on the corruption that I revealed to you in our work. And also the second piece of our work, because I couldn't get my uh, season two of the con budgeted because the entirety of this corruption, all of the power that be suppressed me and made sure that you can't hear this truth because they're spending billions upon billions of dollars to make sure that you don't get this truth. Because what I'm revealing to you is ultimately that the Department of Justice, remember what I started off with, with Eric Holder telling us that the American people have to come to save the day that we the people are the Calvary, which is what I've been telling you all along anyway. But he's saying in context to saving democracy on behalf of whom? The meritocracy, the Wall Street revolving door meritocracy. Do you know who Eric Holder is? 
Eric Holder was, yeah, the first African-American attorney general, but he was also from Covington and Burling, one of the most notable white shoe law firms in the history of the United States, which I believe is equidistant, believe it or not, between the Federal Reserve and the White House in D.C. And I'm sure they have Manhattan offices as well. But he became the department, excuse me, the attorney general of the United States at a time where his law firm was representing what was known as the mortgage electronic uh, system, which basically was responsible for tens of millions of illegal foreclosures. So he came in to be basically uh, a, a guy that would, you know, stop the engines of justice working on behalf of a, a nation of by and for the people because he was working of by and for the corruption through Covington and Burley. In fact, when he spun out of uh, the Department of Justice after the Obama administration, I believe he had something like a $30 million payday, much more monumentally more magnitudes more than what he was getting paid for being the top enforcement official at the DOJ. What's insane about our government in this situation is that government has all the power, but it really doesn't because of the revolving door, because of what they pay people uh, in government is magnitude smaller than what the free market pays supposedly, but it's not a free market because of what I'm going to tell you. Because ultimately the Department of Justice did make the cases and we had a bunch of civil sort of settlements in 2016 with what we call the suspicious, the, I should say, they said suspiciously, the systemically important financial institutions, SIFI institutions, which are too big to fail banks, which ultimately, uh, you know, created this in incredible global pipeline of racketeering fraud, which is the largest fraud in the history of the world that never ended because of what I'm about to tell you. And again, this is the Holy Grail. This is the Ark of the Covenant. That's the Rosetta Stone, all mapped into one because the truth is our savior. And nobody from Rachel Maddow to Lawrence O'Donnell to Tucker Carlson to Russell Brand or any of them have this information, which is absolutely insane. And what I discovered because of what I did with the con, which led me to do season two of the con, which is called the new untouchables that you can do a Google search on. But I've got another 19 hours in a podcast that reveals all the details of this information. And then again, I've got like this is a 485 truth bombs that leads us to this revelation that when as the government was putting together these civil settlements, which weren't criminal, which led to the banks paying two hundred and fifty billion dollars. And everybody was like, wow. The banks got theirs, but there was no criminal investigation and there was no criminal ac criminal accountability. And ultimately, $250 billion sounds like a lot of money, especially because most Americans and the world bought that the government had to come to the emergency back in 2009 with what we called TARP funds, which were $700 billion that basically left everybody's jaw agape, that the government had to come in and buy toxic assets off the uh, books of the banks because they created those toxic assets through everything that I show you in the con that led to then attorney general Eric Holder meeting something like 50 times in the shadows with the CEO of, uh, well, I should say the CEO of wall street, but the CEO of chase, a guy by the name of Jamie diamond, who incidentally is a five-time recidivist since 2009, every time his company or he gets nailed with uh, doing something illegal that leads to civil action litigation, the stock goes up because they're at the apex of what it is that I'm about to tell you. Because it was all a smoke and mirrors, because ultimately, when the uh, Attorney General Eric Holder uh, laid out all these civil violations, <clears throat> he kept saying that, look, there, there is a situation called too big to fail because the, the choices of the few shouldn't train wreck the careers of you know the tens of thousands of employees at some of these huge companies. Meanwhile, it wasn't just a few bad apples. The entire barrel, uh, the, the barrel was filled with bad apples, which, of course, we show you in the con. But ultimately, they make these agreements where, and if you know anything about the law, prosecutors do not meet with defendants. That's the ultimate conflict of interest, and it's not done. But this happened, and to the tune where Jamie Dimon comes out the other side unscathed, even though Rolling Stone through Matt Taibbi did a magnificent takedown piece with all of the evidence, and uh, you could find it online, where this whistleblower by the name of Elaine Fleischman basically was set up as the $9 billion witness to ultimately everything that I'm revealing to you that led to this revelation that I'm giving you that nobody has or ever will, which is why I am the Pied Piper. Ultimately, while this was happening at the Department of Justice, and by the way, when they got those civil settlements, all of the elements of what they did and what they call the um, 
what is it called when you when you a statement of facts and all of these other kind of elements that take the attention away from the people that did it they basically say meaning the department of justice said that the banks did this not the people in the banks which is the biggest ridiculous situation of all time banks don't break the law banks don't steal people in the banks break the law and steal okay which means that they are under the thumb of law like we all are and you all know this if you lie and steal and cheat at your job and you get caught Chances are you're going to pay a major penalty or uh, some sort of consequence that obviously you don't want to do because it's going to destroy everything that you've worked for. Right. But in this case, power is absolute and is above the law. And our founders knew that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And we learned back in 17th century France, right around the same time that um, we were going through our own revolution, that, you know, when a group of men in society discover plunder, which is exactly what this is. They create a legal code to authorize it, which is what I'm telling you, and a moral code to glorify it, which is what MAGA has become, quite frankly, and quite frankly, mainstream media as well. But Eric Holder was doing the song and dance where he reveals all of the elements and same with the Federal Crisis Inquiry Commission of what I revealed to you in the con, but th without showing you who did what, when and how and who was guilty, which is what the federal government is doing exactly with Donald Trump and the 91 indictments, particularly as it relates to Fonnie Willis's RICO case. So you got to understand that that RICO case and the January 6th investigation into the insurrection, basically the shortcut is Donald Trump defrauded the United States by using illegal reps and warranties, which are lying in deception to create this racketeering enterprise led by Rudolph Giuliani, and you can't make this up because he was the godfather of RICO, that ultimately used these election complicit, or, complicit actors in a racketeering scheme to use documentation fraud to steal the election. Yeah, that's what we did with making up fake, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, liars loans to the tunes of tens of millions in a system of fraud, an assembly line of fraud that goes from lending to more, I mean, excuse me, from underwriting it should say mortgage brokerage to underwriting to lending to appraisal to this to that to the next to the to, you know the c collateralized debt obligations and the derivatives which takes it from four and a half trillion dollar um you know housing bubble into an 800 trillion dollar derivatives wipe out of the global economy that then while we're looking into what exactly wall street did and then our you know revolving door eric holder from covington and burling who betrayed his African-American lineage by playing ball for the man. Do I, do we call him an Uncle Tom? Yeah, he and Obama were. Sorry. They created this madness. My shortcut is corruption burrs and fuels fascism. That's what I'm trying to create a tidal wave populist crusade to destroy. And I need to do that with you because what it led to, and this is, again, the most important part of everything that I'm revealing to you. The government didn't just provide $700 billion in liquidity to the financial system that got bankrupt and insolvent from its own fraud and racketeering, which is crime. No, it maneuvered behind the scenes with its complicit actors from, at that time, Hank Paulson, who was a former CEO of Goldman Sachs, who was the Treasury Secretary during the Bush administration, who then worked with uh, the Treasury Secretary of the Obama administration, who was the former president of the New York Federal Reserve, whose job it was, was to police Wall Street to make sure that they weren't doing this. And when the Obama administration came in on change we could believe in, he put all the main people that had created this madness back in control of the power to clean up the madness. And ultimately what they did was they buried the tens of millions of illegal documents used in liar's loans to bury tens of millions of Americans in illegal foreclosures, and then ultimately tens of millions more Americans through pension blow up and you know sovereign wealth funds and um, and uh, you know uh, countries and so on and so forth, including Greece, which is an amazing uh, part of the story because of what I'll end up with here. But ultimately, um, they did that, and the entire ship was going down of the global economy that needed liquidity, i.e. blood or oil, and it was hemorrhaging because of the blood clot that I'm revealing to you, which was this cancer, this tumor of fraud that the Department of Justice, that is the highest court, the, the highest, um, you know, law enforcement agency in the United States with resources that have tens, tens of thousands of employees. And when you add in the FBI, the DOJ, the SEC, AGs around the country, and ultimately, um, uh, 
did I say, oh, the Office of the Comptroller of Currency and Office of Thrift Supervision, they have north of a budget of $90 billion a year. And oh, yeah, by the way, media has budgets of billions of more in tens of thousands of employees, and none of them would reveal the story that I'm revealing to you, which is why I had to make the kind and which led me on this incredible journey to get the uh, information that is our savior, because ultimately the Federal Reserve circled the wagons and through its capacity of the lender of last resort, through what's known as Federal Reserve Act 13.3, which means because we're a fiat currency, we can create money literally by digitizing it, which some might interpret as you know out of thin air, but it's digitizing digits that can go from the books of the Federal Reserve onto the books of the banks and that sort of thing to create liquidity in the system. And what they did was they maneuvered $33 trillion. There's a thousand billion in a trillion. $33 trillion. Initially, like I said, through Hank Paulson, Tim Geithner, who told the American people that the American people are going to be foam on the runway for the crashing financial system, which means you and I are expendable. And then ultimately, a guy by the name of Ben Bernanke, who became the Federal Reserve chairman, who replaced Alan Greenspan, who was like this Chauncey Gardner character for the previous 25 years, who basically created all this madness. And yours truly has all of the information that Alan Greenspan had received all of the forensic information that informed him that liars loans were taking over the housing industry. And it was his job mandated by Congress as the chairman of the Federal Reserve to regulate these markets, which he chose not to based on the information. He conveniently pulls uh, the uh, golden parachute, winds up at a hedge fund two years before the blow up and then pretended like the world never saw this coming. Meanwhile, everybody was cleaning up this disaster in the aftermath by doing what it is that I'm about to tell you. And, and this is the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate truth that nobody's ever going to tell you. And I just mentioned it. The, the Federal Reserve provided $33 trillion illegally. That's the whole point, illegally, because, you know, if anybody who's borrowed any money understands from a financial institution and not from a guy on the street who could break your knuckles if you don't pay a week later, right? The, the You know, loan sharking. The, through banks, the idea is that, you have to have collateral. You have to have ability to pay back. You have to have asset value. None of the banks had any collateral were worth anything because of what I've told you, because of this entire monstrosity of this, this uh, assembly line of fraud that created liar's loans where the, where the uh, collateral, the real estate was worth nothing. And so we spent $33 trillion to prop up these monstrously um, uh, riddled with cancer filled corruption and fraud at these banks that was all run uh, through the system through the dons which are the ceos and they're monumentally bigger than donald trump i can assure you and then ultimately you know we provided another 16 trillion dollars at the time through what was known as quantitative easing and quantitative easing just basically economists are going to tell you that it meant that we just created you know we suppressed interest rate rates to provide free money to the system to create um you know to 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 lubricate the system and get it going again in terms of the economy to stimulate the economy but ultimately they were buying these toxic assets that were worth nothing off of the books of the banks but they didn't actually take the the revenue i mean excuse me the real estate they took the revenue streams and the banks we kept the 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 uh the the, the real estate and then they resold it years later, because if you sit on real estate long enough, eventually things are going to rebound. And if the economy gets going, then you sell it again. So they wiped out an entire generation of Americans that led to massive collateral damage. So just do the math on that real quick. So that's $49 trillion, $33 trillion for the emergency stimulus, plus $16 trillion in quantitative easing. That lasts through about 2016-ish. <clears throat> And that's $49 trillion. In 2019, we provided another $22 trillion, um, you know, because of a repo run that stimulated from, I think, a meltdown at at, uh, at uh, SoftBank in Japan. And that that's not known because we've just basically moved all of business news into the business segment and mainstream media just completely ignores this stuff. And I'm here to tell you, that's the thing that controls the world. And you know the system is corrupt. You know it's rigged, but you don't know who did what, when, and how. And that's what I'm revealing to you. But what you also don't know, because Rachel Maddow and Tucker Carlson and everybody who's around them, that we're talking about Donald Trump and the 91 indictments and RICO and everything else. And as big and monumental as that is in a coup d'etat to basically steal an election <clears throat> to create a fascist state, which is basically going back to the Confederacy, 
<clears throat> I call these guys the new Confederates because they remind me of all of the guys from the South and Jim Crow and all the rest of it, which is what they think of when they think of Amer making America great again, which is to go back to, what, 1920s America. And that's what the KKK was saying then. By the way, that's where Fred Trump came from, Donald Trump's dad. So is it any wonder this is what Donald Trump stands for at this stage of the game? Meanwhile, that's the national Christian fascism that is basically making a move in this revolution. And they've, they, they've always been organized because it comes through the church, right? Churches all operate this way. So that's why they're incredibly organized. Meanwhile, anybody who's on the other side of this whole thing who are educated, <clears throat> for the most part, come from different backgrounds and everything else. Most of us have gone into silos. You know, whether it's Black Lives Matter, Me Too, this or that, you know, and nobody can see the forest for the trees. And so that was forty nine trillion dollars plus twenty two trillion. That's seventy one trillion dollars. That's before that's I'm sorry, that's before COVID <clears throat> and COVID was another train wreck of all sorts of corruption. But ultimately, it wasn't what a lot of people at the top of the, <clears throat> the financial pyramid or I should say the economic pyramid would have to say, you know what, I am going to push pause just so I can clean up my throat real quick. I'll be right back. And what it led to was it, it, you, many of you, well, the guys that are, of course, the rich guys, of course, that any kind of, you know, assistance that helps regular America, they're going to call it socialism, which is insane, considering what I'm telling you. And there were two $1,600 checks to most families during COVID, which was what, $3,200? How much can you survive with a family of four on $3,200? Yeah, there were PPP loans, and some guys were getting paid $600 a week for not doing anything, and they took all their excess money, and they threw it into you know meme stops and crypto and all the rest of it, which is another part of the story. But ultimately, you, know, you end up with this situation um, where you know, it is... Yeah, and the whole nature of the the deal with uh, you know the PP loan fraud and all the millions of people that were skimming from it, mostly those that were you know inside job guys and probably top one percent, you know, were saying that inflation was caused by um, you know too many people getting too much free money. And um, okay, meanwhile we pumped or we made free money available to those that already had assets that got saved through the 2009 situation forward because of everything that I'm revealing to you. And then ultimately we, um, we, you know, I mean, they, they, if you think about the corporations, for example, particularly in the financial sphere and anybody who's like a one percenter, they were getting free money there. I mean, did you ever wonder how, for example, billionaires doubled and tripled their fortunes during COVID. I mean, Elon Musk's net worth, I think, went up thir uh, three times, which was extraordinary. I think he got up to like $250 billion at one point, and that was out from selling more Teslas during um, COVID. No. You know, and same with, um, you know, Zuckerberg and, uh, and uh, you know, Jeff Bezos and all those kind of guys. You know, they they double. I mean, I can see that, you know, there was a lot of sales from Amazon during COVID, that sort of thing. But, you know, it was the stock prices, which was the liquidity that came from zero percent interest where they were trying to stimulate the economy. And the the entirety, the, the entire purpose of the Federal Reserve supposedly is it's supposed to have full employment and regulate inflation to two percent. That's its mandate. And ultimately, a lot of us have confusion about well, is the Federal Reserve independent? Uh, does it work for the banks? Does it work for the financial system? Does it work on behalf of the federal government? The Federal Reserve is a creature and it's mandated by Congress. But because there's so much madness in Congress, do you think ma uh, Congress regulates the Federal Reserve or do you think Federal Reserve regulates Congress? Where's the money coming from? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a rhetorical self-evident question, but the bottom line is there was tens of trillions of dollars more of liquidity that were pumped to billionaires. And so ultimately what you look at in this presidential election cycle as we had the last many presidential election cycles is billionaires spend billions to loot trillions because they can through corrupt politicians, which is their lowest ROI. And oh yeah, where did I start? Well, the fact is that is anybody above the law? Yeah. Is there somebody more powerful than our government? Yeah. The money behind the government that operates through the Federal Reserve that has complete control of everything. And it's tyranny 101. Do you remember back to your you know, education of 1776? And I see so many people walking around with t-shirts with 1776. Do you know what the American Revolution was premised on? Yeah, it's tyranny. Purging tyranny, 
because the founding fathers were like, no, we're not going to be under your thumb and we're not going to serve King Henry the eighth or King George the third, you know, uh, because you're extracting wealth from us when we can be independent. And that's what they did. And of course the founding fathers were flawed, but what they did that none of us did that like to criticize them all the time was they took on the most powerful, you know, <clears throat> empire in history up to that time. And they won and they created a government of by and for the people through separation of powers, through a constitution and bill of rights that holds power to account because they understood absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that was I, I, the ideology of really all the 17th century uh, revolutions, um, particularly the age of terror in France. So I'm leading a populist crusade to purge corruption and drown the fascism it fuels based on the Holy Grail, the Ark of the Covenant, and the, uh, I was about to say, Ark and Stone, if you know what the Ark and Stone is, for those of us who happen to be big J.R.R. Tolkien fans, which I am, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> so sorry. And, you know, where does that leave us? Okay, well, so the judiciary is corrupt in its madness. The media is corrupt in its madness. And here's this situation in the 2024 election cycle we're, we're down to i guess really i mean there's four candidates if you consider the green party uh, or five if you consider um if you consider uh cornell west but it's really between joe biden and donald trump and maybe rfk jr and what do they all stand for in context to what it is that i'm telling you is are any of them talking about how federal reserve act 13.3 was used illegally to give tens of trillions of dollars to a bankrupted financial enterprise that is corrupt to its skills that, oh yeah, incidentally is paying for our political machine on both sides. No, they're not telling you that. And they don't know what the details are. And so they're not a threat to corruption, although RFK Jr. likes to talk about it, but let's just kind of put them all in their silos for a moment. And then I'll, you know, I'll try to close this up as quickly as I can. So really, who is Joe Biden? You know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of, uh, you know, feedback and emails and people that you know, are like, dude, quit doing the lesser of two evils thing. You know, it's like we're looking at fascism. That's all there is to it. But where they're coming from, in my opinion, is ultimately like anybody who's above the line. Let's say you're 10 percent. Uh, you, you've got you're, you're on the, the ladder, the top 10 percent in terms of your um, your resources, your savings, uh, your net value, all that sort of thing. 10% and higher were saved by the system of what I'm telling you. The system didn't work of buying for the people. It worked of buying for the rich. And I'm not going to blame doctors and brain surgeons and architects and all of these people that are successful in their own, own right and that deserve, you know, all of the success that they get. No, we're talking about the top 001% that are basically the financial elite that come from the too big to fail banks and the hedge funds and the private equity and the asset managers and the whole situation. And they, they, they've all been propped up by the Federal Reserve. And again, it's of by and for the corruption, not the people, which is what I'm trying desperately to be like Marshawn Lynch back in the day, slamming into a line or, you know, Mike Tyson in an uppercut and as a heyday. And I believe he's going to do the same thing to Jake Paul in four rounds and live in eternity because that 60 year old guy is looking pretty damn good right now. Or like, you know, Air Jordan, Michael Jordan, sl Tomahawk slamming a dunk. I'm trying to do that with the truth into your heart and soul and your imagination and your inspiration because that's who I am. St. Patrick, I guess. <laughs> and I'm leading this cr crucial charge to lead the sna snakes out of the rotting carcass of our so supposed democracy that Eric Holder is saying it's up to we the people. Yeah, but he's saying the truth is no savior. I mean, excuse me, there is no savior but the American people. I'm saying there is a savior, the American people equipped with the truth that I'm revealing to you that none of this entire system is going to tell you, particularly during this insanity of March madness. And so who is Biden? Biden protected the top 10 percent because of the Federal Reserve. And oh, yeah, unfortunately, we have forever wars. Who's won over the course of the last 20 years? Has it been a war against terror? We've created financial terrorism. But ultimately, we have forever wars, and there's so much collateral damage there, which is absolutely insane. And I could go into that for another 10 hours, but really, it's the military contractors who won. And if you've paid attention to any of my truth bombs, you know that I've been to 
uh, the Richie Rich Estates in Potomac and and Chevy Chase Maryland, and I, those guys are like some of the biggest, highest paid dudes in in the in the world. And I know that they were dropping suitcases of cash all out the you know throughout Iraq and so so forth. These guys have got there's the same amount of corruption and uh, extraction that I'm talking about that's happened at the Federal Reserve. Yeah, the same things happened at the Pentagon. So there's that. So what is Biden, though, ultimately? Is, is Biden the bulwark and the savior, you know, with his newly found energy that he did in the State of Union address that he can take on MAGA and he can give it to him and, you know, rah, rah? Biden, I think, is a pretty good guy, but he's the figurehead for a system that's been in power for at least four decades. It's called the Wall Street meritocracy, the revolving door, which is neoliberalism, which basically killed the golden goose of American enterprise and capitalism and industrialization and everything else decades ago destroyed it and that's they created globalization through the middle guy which is wall street <clears throat> and then they backstopped it because we've got you know the 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 unbelievable position which we're going to lose if we don't wake up and get a hold of this as soon as possible <clears throat> because of where the BRICS countries are going and by the way i think this is why Putin is all in on Trump because they want to get their piece because they know everything I'm telling you. And all they, they know that all they have to do is knock out what they call the Western elites, which is, you know, un, a probably underhanded um, messaging, you know, kind of like blood libel. And it's the Jews, I'm sure, at some point from those guys. It's going to backfire. I mean, they're all in on Israel, which is crazy because the evangelicals and that, uh, you know, dance with the devil that ultimately has led to yeah, everybody on that side going, yeah, well, this is this is Armageddon. So Gaza be damned in all of what that relates to, which has been another subject of my truth bomb. But I need to finish this up because Biden is, yeah, a lesser two evil choice that, you know, Delaware is the ultimate LLC capital of the world and everything that's tied to this. He was involved with credit cards and the prison industrial complex and everything else. Is he a good guy on the whole? I'd, I'd like to say in terms of flawed people, way more than Donald Trump. Yeah. And if it was a, ch a choice between Donald Trump and uh Unfortunately, Biden. Yeah, I'd, I'd go with Biden. Unfortunately, and, and I'd hold my nose. The odor of mendacity going into the voting booth. Yeah, and that's what many people like me, progressives particularly, are going to do if, or, or they're just going to sit it out and they're going to let Trump win. But what is Trump? Trump is a chump. He's the chump stain. He is a freaking idiot. He's been engaged with this level of crime for decades, and he should have been in jail a long time ago. The whole time he was like, "Mr. You're fired on the Apprentice." He was taking money laundering scheme from all of the Russians vis-a-vis -vis Deutsche Bank and NBC and Mark Johnson, I think is, if I got the name right, the uh, producer, you know, that and like, you know, uh, what is it called? Survivor and all of the other ones. He's, he's all in on the reality TV shtick. You know, NBC and again, like I said earlier, Les Moonves and Jeff Zucker at CNN, you know, all of these presidents, they thought that Trump was good for ratings and it blew up in all of their faces. And oh, yeah, a lot of them are Jews. How ironic is that? How ironic is that? Oh, yeah. And then, by the way, there's a lot of Jewish people in finance and the law that are involved with this. And oh, yeah, by the way, my name is Patrick. Patrick is Irish. Stuart is my middle name, which is Scottish. Lovell is my last name, which is English. And it goes back to Middle English. And it actually means the wolf, which ironically was my nickname, coincidentally. And uh, am I Irish? No, I, I can wear a... Uh, you know, kiss me, I'm Irish. And I've been to many parties throughout my life in Chicago and the Green River and Green Beer and kiss me, I'm Irish and partied until the, you know, till the leprechauns came home and, uh, you know, slam dancing to all of my favorite Irish jig punk ska music, all of that stuff. Yeah, maybe I am kind of like an expression of ska, uh, excuse me, of, of Irishness. And because I kind of, you know, walk around like Popeye and I'm delivering an uppercut to corruption like Bluto. Uh, you know, channeling my my inner Mike Tyson, which is what this is all about. But no, I'm Jewish. I do come from a mixed background. My my family, my father's family was Lutheran uh, way back. They were Protestant. My grandmother became uh, Catholic, you know, so they're all mostly Christian. And then on my father, my, my mother's side, I'm Jewish. They all came from Ukraine, quite frankly, and, and the pogroms, and they escaped to the United States. And the closest uh, and most inspirational figure in my life was my grandfather, who said I was named after the Jewish mayor of Dublin, which ironically I read once in a uh, biography that I think uh, Bono has a very similar sort of um, background. And ultimately, yeah, I know Bono's on the uh, warring side of uh, uh, of uh, <clears throat> Mr. Pink Floyd. Why can't I think of uh, one of my favorite 
Pink Floyd artist of all time. Um, because my mind is swimming with names. Um Of course, Jesus, one of my favorites of all time, Roger Waters, right? And everything all things Gaza, and he's all over Bono. But <clears throat> you know, but but I'm Jewish, and I and honesty. And my my grandfather said to me, you know, when I was growing up, he's like, like one, you got to understand that life's a fight, and you got to stick true to your 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 courage and your heart and your integrity, because integrity is really your sail and your north star and your rudder, and it's who you are. Because he'd say, if you're not uh, in alignment with your ideals, if your actions aren't in alignment with your ideals, you're in disarray. And I knew this when I was 13 years old, when I had my bar mitzvah speech, when I talked about honesty being the best policy, and that's how you have to do everything in life. Yeah, I gave it to God way back in the day. Um, you know, I'm 55 years old now. And uh, it's amazing that I'm bringing these truths to you because yeah, Trump is a sellout, treacherous, treasonous clown. He's got 91 indictments of, against him, including, you know, the stain of, uh, you know, sleeping with uh, a, a, a porn star. And I, I, to give you an idea of who I am, I haven't even seen any video on funny, uh, not funny, well, Stormy D Daniels. That was a kind of funny faux pas. You know, I, so what's that tell you about me? I, I have never seen Stormy Daniels in action, but good honor. But at the same time, I think, you know, the, the sickness of Trump was that he hooked up with her on a morally construct when his wife had just given birth to their child. Uh, what is his name? Baron? Something like that. What a joke, Baron. And of course, Kushner and all the corruption with Saudi Arabia and everything that that constitutes. And he's a total sellout. And, you know, everything with Putin and everything else. Donald Trump doesn't care about MAGA. He doesn't give a flying fuck. He's there to use you and suck you dry and bleed you dry and con you. And that's what he's all about. And you want that guy as your president? And yeah, like I said, corruption burrs and fuels fascism. And so, look, fascism is my ultimate enemy. Did I mention I'm Jewish? Yeah, I'm not religious. I'm, you know, from a mixed family and my last name is Lovell. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, but I, but I do hold true, you know, to basically a lot of the parables. And I'll tell you, the, the biggest sort of inspiration for me was all things Exodus. Yeah, I share that with Bob Marley, man. Exodus and Moses and we the people and all of that stuff, which if you understand the whole corollary, you know, we the people, or excuse me, Exodus, you know, free from bondage and tyranny of the pharaohs to basically seek out independence that would be the ultimate resistance against tyranny that created the law. And that was what the whole idea was. Now, granted, the first I what for the commandments are to God, but the rest are common sense, right? <clears throat> this has been going on the whole time, and corruption has always been an undercurrent. And I learned a long time ago that there's two columns of our soul. You've got character, integrity, dignity, and decency versus hypocrisy, duplicity, and complicity. And our souls skew one way or the other, depending on you know what the pressure is. But you're not going to buy yourself a stairway to heaven, my friends. The truth is your savior. The truth is our salvation. I am not the savior. I am the messenger. I am leading a crusade against corruption and drown the fashion with fuels by creating exodus against corruption and the uh, resurrection of the American dream. Because Biden and Trump are the lesser of two evils approach. And then RFK Jr. It's not even the lesser of two evils approach. It's like the end of the world approach is what we're talking about. And what is RFK Jr.? Look, I'll tell you, RFK Jr. is just amazing uh, in, in so many weird ways. But first and foremost, the guy <clears throat> came out of the gate, you know, proclamating that the CIA murdered his uh, uncle, which was absolutely huge. Yeah, I think the CIA did that. I know there's a lot of people I respect and I listen to and I've paid a lot of attention to all things Kennedy assassination throughout the years. You say the CIA didn't do it. You know, it was probably a mob hit, that sort of thing. Maybe it was Cuba. I think it was the CIA. If you ever watched Oliver Stone's CIA uh, excuse me, uh, JFK, what did he basically reveal to us after Mr. X on the uh, on the uh, uh, National Mall, which is one of my favorite uh, scenes in movie his history. <clears throat> he basically um, said it was the military industrial fo fossil fuel financial paradigm that killed Kennedy, which reminds me of what Ro the Rolling Stones said. Um, you know, I shouted out who killed the Kennedys when after all it was you and me. Right. Again, which takes you to sympathy for the devil. Pleased to meet you. Hope you guess my name. And 
with RFK Jr. with that proclamation, you know, I started paying a lot of attention to what he was saying. And it was very interesting at first because of his position on Russia and his understanding of the Russian history, particularly against the Nazis, regardless of what you think about Stalin, because of the, you know, incredible sacrifice of the Russian people. I mean, they lost 20 million people um, destroying the Nazis. And if they didn't do it, we would have had to spend a lot more treasure and blood to get there. And I think we would have done it, uh, but it would have taken the nuclear bomb, obviously. <clears throat> but the Russians, you know, uh, in, in the United States just pulled a Cersei Lannister. And, you know, if you ever saw the end of Game of Thrones, when everybody was like, oh, my God, I can't believe Cersei did that when she was going to break the wheel. But by breaking the wheel, she absolutely destroyed the power. She just crushed it and everything associated with it. And that's what we have to do to what I'm talking about. Now, I'm talking about it metaphorically because I'm not talking about a bloody revolution because we still have remnants of the law to be able to do that. And ultimately, RFK Jr. has said some amazing things about you know reconstituting the middle class. I mean, the guy is all about environmentalism, but he's also about you know crypto, which is a real problem. And he's got a libertarian bent and libertarianism isn't about freedom so much as it is about doing the work of billionaires, if you want to know the truth. And then ultimately, you know, RFK Jr., the biggest problem with him is the fact that I know he's tied to Fox through Tucker Carlson and um, Steve Bannon. And yeah, it does look like he's the chaos agent. And he hasn't proved to me otherwise. If he renounced everything Donald Trump in a way that I am, and he renounced Tucker Carlson and he renounced Steve Bannon, you know, then I'd be all in on 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 on, on RFK in, in a way that I wouldn't be otherwise. But yeah, I do have red flags about his vaccines and, you know, some of the other nutty stuff that he's talked about. But, you know, he's a defense attorney. He understands systemic corruption. He understands pharmaceuticals and he never talks about the Sacklers. But, you know, he, he definitely understands lobbyists and power and the CIA. But here's what's so ironic about RFK Jr. And I'll finish up with this. He started with the CIA. And Vladimir Putin, and in his discussion with Tucker Carlson, was like, yeah, well, there is somebody in control in the United States. And he made fun of Tucker in the process, but he, he basically said it's the CIA. And I thought that for a very long time. Now, the CIA works in concert with the financial power. But at the same time, yeah, I think they have an outsized influence because yeah, they have black budgets and they could probably take out anybody in the world they wanted to, including yours truly, which is kind of ironic that they haven't yet. So if I happen to you know disappear, I didn't murder myself, just so you know. But ultimately what I'm revealing to you, and this is the second half of the Rosetta Stone, Ark and Stone, Holy Grail, Ark of the Covenant revelations of what I'm telling you, because I'm the Pied Piper of the truth, which is our savior, was that, as it turns out, and I didn't learn this until 2022, but a gentleman by the name of Roger Cohn, who was the partner in the, in the top boss at uh, a law firm called Sullivan and Cromwell. And Sullivan and Cromwell, if your ears perked up, just happened to be the law firm that created the CIA, of course, by through the Dulles brothers. You ever hear of the Dulles brothers as it relates to the Kennedy assassination and everything that that constitutes? Well, yeah. So lo and behold, Sullivan and Cromwell is acting on behalf of the, what they called in this interview with the Federal Crisis Inquiry Commission that happened in 2012, that I didn't come across until 2021, where Raj Cohen says, yeah, they, they expanded the lending box of Federal Reserve Act 13.3 to provide tens of trillions of dollars illegally to the bankrupted insolvent financial institutions that got that way through corruption because they didn't know how deep the derivatives pull went. They didn't understand how much, how many times the multi, the, the assets of the, of the, the, the houses were multi-pledged through the derivatives. They didn't know. They didn't know how it was like, it was endless black hole of fraud. You remember when I said that we had a four and a half trillion dollar housing market that blew up to a 600 to 800 trillion dollar derivatives global contagion yeah th this is how and so it was roger cohen negotiating on behalf of the consortium the two fig to bail fail systemically important financial institutions while eric holder was meeting behind the scenes with then department of justice uh, attorney general eric holder where 
they're the ones that determined, hey, don't worry about the law. Don't worry about what's going on. We got to save the financial system. And in doing so, they buried tens of millions of Americans, which led to MAGA. And as far as I can tell, RFK Jr. isn't a threat to that either. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us where I started, the Clean New Deal and what I'm doing. Now that you have all of the facts, and, and please check out everything I'm saying at Patrick Level Truth Bombs the Con in my 485 Truth Bombs, but more importantly at the Con, which was a professionally produced project that cost four and a half million dollars that got, gives you the $70 trillion truth that the $90 billion a year apparatus of the federal government with everything that I, I mentioned and the media, which has tens of billions of more, didn't do. What is the value of Patrick Lovell, all things considered? Incredible, even if I'm the only one who knows it. And I, I don't walk on water. I am not arrogant. I am literally just a regular dude that's got a lot of other things going on right now. And I've got to run to a St. Patty's Day party where I'm going to go drink Guinness and green beer and then listen to my favorite music and rock out and we'll see where the day goes like millions of you but ultimately rfk jr in context to the cia they're the ones who provided tens of trillions of dollars to this financial system that is the new tyranny that is the the guys behind the curtain, the Oz, and I, that's what I've been on this whole time is, you know, a Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz journey. And by the way, I do have an incredible story about visiting the Wizard of Oz Museum, where I got in my hands the original Frank Lloyd Baum book that was in the World Trade Center that got shipped out the day um, before 9-11 and wound up in this museum in, in, in Kansas. And I'm like, that's pretty interesting, all things considered, not to mention so many other things that have happened. But um, look, guys, none of the presidential candidates can deliver the truth of what I'm revealing. So they're not going to change anything. Obviously, Biden's not going to. We've got to build a tidal wave populist crusade to purge corruption and drown the fashion of the fuels with tens of millions of patriots equipped with the truth that is our savior through the Clean New Deal, which is our which is our crusade. And ultimately, you know, I had laid out, you know, at the very beginning of this truth bomb sequence that I wanted to create a La La Palooza tour, but we've run out of time. I mean, we don't have the funds to do that. I'm going to angle in on something in the summer where we hopefully get millions of people to Washington, D.C., on the Washington Mall, underneath the uh, gaze of Abraham Lincoln, to present all of this information that I'm telling you to hopefully millions of people where we get all the oxygen, where we elevate the truth over the madness of o ocean of lies and insanity. <clears throat> into where you're all knowledgeable about who did what, when, and how, and what they got away with, and how everybody is lying to you. And by the way, I've got all the information, and I'm the producer. That's what I am, is the producer. And, you know, I can deliver this stuff in a way that, you know, is the ultimate, and you are the grand jury of the American public. And I'm a modern-day Ferdinand Pecora, which, if you don't know who that is, I don't have another 30 minutes to talk about it, because... We've gone through this episode before. Ferdinand Pecora was the Sicilian immigrant who understood the mob. He was a pick yourself up by the bootstraps kind of guy that got off the boat. He got into law by paying his own way through you know, law school, ends up in Tammany Hall and the whole waspish sort of corridor of power. And he works his way through the system until history hands him an opportunity to figure out what created the Great Depression. And he did. And he put that through a media that worked to the American people that had lived in Hoover towns and 25% unemployment and all of the misery and suffering of the great depression. And what came out of that concurrently to all of these movements that led to, you know, um, FDR that ultimately created the new deal of which was part and parcel to this, where because of what Ferdinand Pecora did, they, the, the government did work for a buy and for the people and they created what was called glass Eagle where they separated commercial banking from investment banking, and they got rid of the three most dangerous letters in finance, which is gambling with OPP, other people's money. That's not that song from back in the 80s. You're down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> Who's down with OPP? All the ladies. Yeah, man, other people's money, dude. That creates this casino of hell that's created this new tyranny because – Imagine if you could, you could flip a switch and you could pay all your debts. You could buy all the drinks for the bar around the world and you wouldn't have to worry about it and get in your yacht and your Tesla. What kind of St. Patty's Day party could you have? 
And then, you know, you don't have to worry about paying for it. Just uh, hit the switch again and pay for it. That's what finance has been doing to us the whole time. Well, you've been hanging on by your fingertips trying to keep your family together. And if you didn't, you probably got completely bulldozed by this mammoth corruption that created collateral damage to the tens of millions of Americans that wound up in suicides and homelessness and divorces. And it just destroyed the nuclear family of the United States. And so what would you expect would happen? The chaos that we're in the midst of and all of the lies and the deceitful con artists that will you know, do a Jimmy Baker and try to promise you a stairway to heaven if you give them money. I'm not doing that. I'm providing you the $70 trillion truth for free because all of the American people buy our lies. That's right. The con, www.con.tv. The, the that's free. And so ultimately, the Clean New Deal is going to, A, make millions of Americans aware of what they already know, which the entire system is completely corrupt. And to believe former uh, Attorney General Eric Holder when he says the institutions aren't going to save us. And like him, I say the American people, it's up to us. But unlike him, he says there is no savior except for us. And I say the savior is the truth. And I'm throwing you the lifeline of truth so you can wrap your head around all of this stuff. And ultimately, there's more. But none of the presidential candidates can do this because the Clean New Deal, not only does it present this information, but we have to have the investigation to be able to hold the bad guys to account. So ultimately, we you know get back and we clean up the Department of Justice. We clean up the FBI. We get rid of all the goons in finance, uh, the dons. We, you know, we, we try them. And, you know, we, if they found if they're found guilty based on all the evidence that I have and then some, then we take back all of their stolen gains over the course of the last 10 years. But we take back their power. That's what this is. Do you ever hear of a band called the Interrupters? Take the power back. That's what I'm all about. What's your plan for tomorrow? Are you a leader? Are you a follow? Are you a dun 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 dun? Take back the power. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you, man. And uh, you know that's what this is all about. Because when you understand that seventy trillion dollars went to the bad guys that are destroying everybody else, let's just call them the Confederate slave masters that want to keep you in debt bondage. Like I said, I'm leading a crusade to purge corruption, so I'm breaking the chains of bondage, and then I'm going to create the resurrection of the American dream with you. Because, yeah, capitalism has to work, as does, by the way, um, the law. But if you have regulation, just like we have police and cops you know, that shoot the bad guys and good guys, unfortunately, but the idea is that, look, guys, we have planes, we have technology, we have rockets, we have cars, we have ships. How does the ship float? It has the integrity of the system. How do lights function in all of cities throughout the a country? Because they they work, because they have the integrity of the system. How does, a, how does a plane fly? Same, so on and so forth. It's not rocket science. We're in 2024, people. But again, we're in 2024. The lesser of two evils situation takes us back to like, what, 1990, as if the last 30 years didn't happen? Bullshit. You got to think of me as a placeholder because we got to lead the charge in a massive revolution against this insanity of tyranny that's the ultimate american thing and it, it, it has to be all of us who believe in liberty and justice for all and then ultimately we've got to create because of this information that i provided you a new glass steagle we got a separation commercial banking from investment banking after we take out the dons we decapitate the dons and i think we should probably have national banks i think that's the solution that's another conversation we can have downstream but ultimately then you have to get rid of glass steagle which is making legalized corruption possible that's got to end immediately and then ultimately that 70 trillion dollars that's the starting point to reinvigorate the american middle class and recreate a paradigm of renewable energy based on all the wonder wonders wonders of the american capacity there's nothing this country can't achieve there's nothing this country hasn't achieved we are the country of possibility what i am revealing to you is of course the American dream turned into the American nightmare, but we can get it back. What we got to do is we've got to purge the clouds. This is the sun, the, the, the bolt of uh, sunshine that goes into your heart and electrifies your entire being because we are not a democracy and we are not a capitalistic nation. We are a corporate fascist state undergirded by a criminal syndicate that uses socialism to fund the mafiocracy that is now fueling fascism. We, this is the tumor of corruption that is destroying everything. We must destroy the tumor of corruption and in doing so we free ourselves from the bondage of corruption and we resurrect 
the American dream. Because I'm St. Patrick and I'm driving the snakes out of the dead carcass of America. Rise, roar, revolt. When you've got the truth, you're bulletproof. This isn't rocket science, it's racketeering. It's a heavy lift and therefore it's the righteous grind, but failure is not an option. You have what it takes to lockstep with me, arm in arm, to generate the tidal wave populist crusade to destroy everything that must be destroyed. It's the ultimate battle between good and evil. And oh yeah, for those of you who believe in Armageddon, yeah, maybe consider it that. Because what is Armageddon? It's supposedly the battle between good and evil, is it not? To bring in the Messiah to create a thousand years of what, peace? Well, maybe that's what we have to do and we can't fight forever wars without being able to destroy the corruption that's destroying everything else. Guys, thank you for listening. Have a wonderful, wonderful St. Patrick's Day. And um, Jesus, will you please like, subscribe, share? Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Please watch my work. I love you. I do. If you've listened, I, I do. I love you. Thank you. Please, please join me. We're running out of time. There is no time left, but we can save the day. We can save the world. And if we get this thing right, man, I promise you, it's going to be like that scene in uh, in uh, The Matrix where Zion was partying. And that's what I'm off to right now. Happy St. Patrick's Day.